Welcome to another video of SyncPix. In this video, we'll see how we can use stable diffusion to use your own photo, your own face, your own image. So here you can use the positive prompts and here you can use negative prompts, for example. Using these prompts, you can convert your image into these type of images. If I again generate the image, generated another image, here you can see. It is running on my local system right now. So installing stable diffusion. Before installing, I'll show you how we can create your own model the way actually we have already seen it right now. So here is Dream Booth Stable Diffusion. I have provided the link in the description. All right, so here you can see Dream Booth Stable Diffusion. And before starting this, these are all the steps that you need to follow. Before following these steps, you need to make sure that you have your own images, uh, 512 pixel square shape. You can see here all of the images are 512 pixel. And you can have various pictures wearing different clothes, front looking and side pose and all of that. You can have various type of your images. So you should have minimum 20 images. So all the images are starting with my name only. So these images are ready. And once I have all these images available, then I should start the process here. So first of all, the first step, which is checking the GPU and VRAMs, allow it to load. So run anyway. It has completed this particular process. Now, in second step, I will need to click here. It will download the Dream Booth uh, train model. This is using Google Cloud Platform to run this particular script. You can see here Python 3, Google Compute Engine. And now you can see here this particular step is completed now. Now, the next step is to log into the Hugging Face. So, first of all, you need to create the Hugging Face account. If I go here, hugginface.co, click sign up here and then provide your email ID and password. The moment you have created the account, you will click here model card. So once you create the model card, it will ask you, of course, to give the permission to uh, Dream Booth. The moment you give the permission to Dream Booth, you can close this or you can go here into settings. And once you go into settings, you have to click here in access tokens. And here you have to generate your access token. So I have already generated one of the access tokens. And you, if you want to create the access token, you will simply click here, new token. Once you create new token, you will give the token name here. For example, stable diffusion tutorial two. And I'll give the access to write permission here. Copy the token here. You need to paste it over here. Once you paste, simply I run this particular step here and here it is done so once it is completed then you will go here settings and run so this is the next step and what you need to do here that you need to save this particular model into your google drive account if you don't want to do that will not save the model it will just after entire process it will remain there and once you terminate this session all the model that you have generated will be deleted so i have already created a google account here and Right now I have 15 GB available here, but if you have at least four to five GB of storage available, so you can use that. So I'll click on save to the Google Drive and I'll give a model name here, output directory. I can, this shows ZWX, so I can name it, for example, Amjad Ali. And here, once I click this play, it will ask me to give permission to the Google Drive. So this notebook is requesting access to Google Drive. So I'll just click here. And here is my Google Drive, uh, Google account. So I'll just give the permission, click this, and of course, allow. Now, this step is completed. My Google Drive is connected now. Here, I'll go down here now, start training. So use this table below to choose the best flags. You can also add multiple concepts here by tweaking max train steps and all of that. Uh, for the instant prompt, I'll be changing this here. If you remember, I changed that model name uh, ZWX to Amjad Ali. This is a person, so I'll be using person. And here also, I'll be changing it to Amjad Ali. It will be person. And instead of ZWX, it will be Amjad Ali. You can see here that example they have also given here. Now, if you see here down, upload the images by running the cell. I'll not use upload here. I'll just drag and drop all these images into the directory. You can see here, if I click here, my local folder is here into data and Amjad Ali. In this particular folder, I'll be adding all my uh, real images here. I'll just simply drag and drop it over here. 
to this particular folder. Here you can see all these images are already uploaded. Using drag and drop, I have uploaded the files. So I don't need to run the upload script here. I have to avoid this. Now, this is very important here. So I'll be changing this again to Amjad Ali and person. Some of the recommended settings that need to be changed here is, uh, for example, num class images, it shows 50. I'll be using this to 12. So here it shows 800 is the train steps, but uh, recommended is that it should be between 1000 and 2000. Uh, so I'll be changing it to 2000. And similarly, uh, save intervals. So I'll be saving 2000 intervals. So it should be equal to or greater than uh, the train steps. So I'll be changing that here. Once you have done it, this particular process is gonna take time. In my first case, actually it took 40 minutes. Once you click this, it will start training the model now. It will start running this particular process. If your session is inactive, if you are not on this particular window, your session might get disconnected. So if it gets disconnected, then you will need to start the entire process from scratch again and keep scrolling this up and down. It will take time. So we'll just uh, go ahead and there and let me uh, pause this video. And the moment uh, this particular step is completed, so I'll show you how long it took. All right. Now, if you see here, this particular process is completed. So all the steps, 2000 of 2000 steps are completed in 24 minutes and 32 seconds. Now we'll move to next step here. It shows that specify the way directory. Otherwise it will automatically create the directory here. So I'll just click this. And now we will run to generate the preview. So I'll run this and I'll see how my sample images are used to generate the stable diffusion images. And now what it does is that I want to convert way to CKPT to use in web UI like automatic 1111. For this purpose, actually, I created this particular step. So I'll be running this now. So we'll wait for this process to complete. Now you can see here that converted CKPT saved at this particular location. Here you can see here model.ckpt is stored and it's 2 GB. So I'll be downloading this also at the same time uh, to use it in Stable Diffusion Web UI. And here I will now take you to the next step, which is interface. So it will generate the interface here. I'll just click here. All right. So now my interface is ready here. The prompt of this, it has uh, shown these images. But as you know that we changed the prompt here. It was under the person. I can mention here where I'll run this prompt here and run this here. Now it will generate four sample images here. And depending upon the seed, which is already here, you can see here, it will use the default seed, this one. And in case you want to change the seed also, you can change it. If you do it a uh, minus one, so it will every time create a new seed, create the image based on the new seed. Uh, so some of the prompts that I stored here, uh, I have uh, some prompts which I have created. So this is prompt. All right, so now it's time to see the images here. You can see here, it has generated the image. Click on next video to see how we can install Stable Diffusion based on this particular model. And then we'll use the local locally installed Stable Diffusion to generate this. So see you in next video. Take care and goodbye.